Our products and parts, made of different materials, don't just appear fully formed. They're cast, molded, drawn, poured, and otherwise shaped and processed into the parts we often take for granted. Processing is defined as a series of mechanical or chemical operations applied to something in order to either change it or preserve it. If we're thinking about materials, we can't just take atoms, compounds, or molecules from the earth and turn them straight into our water bottles and hip implants. Like the definition says, there's a series of steps involved in getting from our raw materials to our final products. A lot of times, even the raw materials are not in a usable state and instead themselves have to be processed to get to starting materials that we then can use to get to our final product. To think about this, let's take a sweet example. Chocolate. Chocolate is a sweet treat enjoyed around the world, with Switzerland taking the top spot with the most chocolate consumed per capita. Now, chocolate starts as the cacao pod. How do we get from this to this? Well, first we have to process our cacao pod. We roast it, dry it, grind it, and press it in order to get the starting compounds for our chocolate bar, cocoa butter and cocoa solids. But this still isn't our chocolate bar. These are our starting materials. We then mix these with other ingredients like sugar in various ratios, depending on if we're making white, milk, or dark chocolate. White chocolate does not have any cocoa solids, only cocoa butter, hence its color. But sadly, you can't just mix your ingredients together, melt, pour, and poof, you get a chocolate bar. Chocolate is what's known as a polymorph, meaning there are multiple crystalline forms that can occur. If I'm thinking about my chocolate, I would like it to melt in my mouth, but not on my hands. Therefore, I want something with a very specific melting temperature. Our hands are generally cooler than body temperature, so I would like my chocolate to have a crystalline form that melts at just above body temperature. For us, this means crystal form 5. In order to make crystal form 5, I need to be very careful while processing my chocolate, paying close attention to time and temperature, and control it carefully in order to get that form. This process is called tempering. Maybe you've heard of it, or even tried it yourself. It can be quite difficult to master. Our chocolate bar, if properly processed, should be dry yet shiny, should have an audible snap, and it shouldn't melt in your hands. Well, maybe for not under filming lights. Funny enough, the process for making chocolate actually follows a similar timeline to how we process steel. In this ANSYS innovation course on the introduction to material processing, we'll be highlighting some of these key elements that I've talked about in our chocolate making process. In lesson one, we'll be talking about just general processing, getting from raw materials to our final products and the different stages involved. For lesson two, we'll be identifying four key elements, time, temperature, environment, and pressure, and seeing how they impact our material processes. And finally, in lesson three, we'll be looking at our material life cycle, how it's processed and the environmental impact of these processes. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and I'll be your instructor for today's course. Thanks for joining me today, and let's get started.